sea gap reacts we don't have hungry eyes we have many eyes oh, we're gonna hit another many eyes video new release from just last week yep. i believe dropped friday morning yep uh might have been evening but yeah yep or evening um it's been a common trend with our reaction videos we've yeah, done every release every, so far one of their new releases from mystic chord was yep. the previous one and the yep. first one revelation, revelation which revelation was great very hard hitting yeah i like that one a good introductory to yeah. uh, the the new sound or the new band mm -hmm. yeah Yep. And then they kind of scaled it down a little bit with more, a little bit more of like a grunge rock mm -hmm. side of things with Mystic Chord. Yep. And now we're getting to this one, which full disclosure, we've both seen we, or heard. I yep. haven't seen the full video, but yep. I have heard. I haven't watched the whole video. Yep. I skipped around a little bit, mm -hmm. but I've listened to the song quite a few times yeah. in the last couple of days. So and the reason I'm even mentioning that is because I think a lot of times maybe people watch a reaction video expecting the reaction to be the first time reaction. Mm-hmm. Where I think we we do some of that, um, yeah. but mostly I think that your initial reaction isn't often the most authentic. Well, not right. authentic, but it's not the most informed, mm -hmm. and it's reactionary a lot of time. But which is obviously what we want from a reaction video, but it's not right. necessarily the most accurate portrayal of how you feel about the song. So I think after a few listens, us watching it and reacting together and discussing it actually mm -hmm. probably gives it more credence because it's a more thoughtful. I mean, reaction. you could have you could have different reactions in a different environment too. Right. You know, me just sitting listening to it on Spotify yeah. or listening to it in an Instagram post sure. is going to be a lot different than watching the music video. And with I think you. context is important too, which is mm -hmm. why we're going to discuss a little bit of the context of this song because I think it's for anyone who hasn't heard it yet, it's it's a little bit of a drastic turn from where. Mm -hmm. He's been just with this band, Many yeah. Eyes, but also from anyone who knows Keith Buckley, it's a little bit of a departure mm -hmm. from the sound, both yeah. locally and musically. Though it's not completely foreign. We've seen him get into some of that, even in their last Every Time I Die album, Radical. Uh, there's a song called Thing With Feathers, which is a very uh, lighter side of Keith and the band, that band at the time. Um, that'd be a good one for you to listen to also. That mm -hmm. had a very deep meaning as well. So... Keith recently did discuss, which he doesn't do often, uh, give you much context to what his writing is about, but he did for this song. And uh, in his words, future proof is about trusting your intuition in order to move from the certainty of hopelessness to the uncertainty of hope. It's about disconnecting from present pain to begin a personal journey down a path towards recovery, a path full of unimagined beauty that ends in a true connection to the love that surrounds us all. So obviously very thoughtful and very deep from a man who, mm -hmm. if you've been following at all throughout his career, is often very thoughtful and uh, eloquent. So yeah, this will be a fun one to break down with you, mm -hmm. as I think we probably have different opinions on it to a degree. But let's do it, boy. Yep. This is Many Eyes, Future Proof, official video. Get that shit plugged in. Yeah. I didn't set this up before. My bad. That's all right. That's what editing is for. Uh -oh. It's also for what who gives a shit is for. Uh oh. Okay. I think we're good. We'll find out. Edit. And, and away. And away we, we go. go. I like the visuals. Yeah, yeah. And you, you love the performance videos. I do. Definitely a 90s feel to it. Mm -hmm.
I can't, so in listening to the song previously, and even listening to it now, I'm trying to relate it to another band, I'm trying to associate it with another sound, yeah. and I, I can't like put my finger on anything in particular. No, which I think is a good thing. Um, yeah. I know yeah. they've cited a lot, obviously, and we've talked about in the other releases, a lot of influences that they've drawn from, and a lot of it is from that 90s grunge era, mm -hmm. um, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, like... And I think we've heard elements of that in the previous two releases. I'm yeah. hearing it here, yeah. but it's not as specific. Like you said, yeah. it's it's kind of like they took those influences and made it something completely their own. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I think that it has a unique sound, but also a familiar sound, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, it's softer than Clearly. their other songs, yeah. but it's not soft. Like, right. I don't want to downplay the, it's the power of the lyrics and the power of the music right. at all. Because just first listening to it, like, it spoke to me for some reason. And that's what music is for, right? Like, yeah. And that's when you know you found something that you like. Now, mm -hmm. to this point, it hasn't resonated with me the same way it has with you. But this is only, like, my second full listen. So that's I'm kind of taking it in a little bit more than I did the first time. Because the first time, it was a lot to think about because it was a departure from... Mm -hmm. And not that I'm completely unfamiliar with the softer side of Keith. I mean, even his side project, The Damn Things, is a lot more singing vocals than it is screaming. So it's not mm -hmm. something we've never heard or I've never heard. It's just... It's different. It's different for him. It's different for the band. It's different from even what these band members have written in other projects that they've been in. Um, but it's cool. I think it's brave so far. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, yeah. it's very cool. <laughs> Does it have a little black hole sun vibe video wise? Yeah, a little bit. Mm hmm. That, a James Bond intro. That's what it reminds me of. We're like different characters moving in yeah. and out. That's awesome. This is a new vocal for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a clear, different sound uh, from what they've been putting out, though it has been a progression to that, because mm -hmm. each song has progressively gotten a little bit on, not I don't want to say the softer side, but, you know, less of that um, hardcore sound and more of like right. an alternative rock, very 90s influenced alternative rock, mm -hmm. with a modern twist. And, and I think it's good. I think it's brave on his part, because... Not that he's been typecast as a vocalist, because he has range and he ha does a lot of different styles, but I think to put out a song that is along these lines is, is a departure from what we've come to know of him as the normal mm -hmm. sound, you know, and it, it's yeah. good. It's cool. It's it's not necessarily a song that I personally would seek out a lot to listen to, but I do think the meaning behind it and everything does ha hold 
a nice value and it adds to the the sound of the music mm-hmm. as well yeah and I, I think we i think we mentioned this in one of the other reacts with many eyes it'll be interesting to see in the coming weeks or months yeah what an album sounds like yeah and where these songs fit together and how the songs mm-hmm. play off of each other possibly yeah when in you know the completion of an album from start to finish yep that'll be interesting it will be especially because it's going to be the first one that they put together as a trio so you know Mm -hmm. i'll be curious to see how that how they come together as a group i'll be curious to see if the album does kind of tell a story if it has a lot of different variations in it or if this is a one-off to the album um but one thing you know is you're getting i'm sure i know with keith but i'm sure with the other guys the belmore brothers that you're gonna get something that's well thought out and well intentioned Mm -hmm. and it's not going to be lazy by any stretch yeah so that'll be uh you're yeah you're dead on i can't wait to see what the album looks like i think at some point the singles will stop coming and it'll be an album release Mm -hmm. i haven't seen a date yet but i I would recommend anybody who's out there like dive into some of keith buckley's interviews that he does especially ones within the last few years um he's very introspective he's very honest he's very open about him and the journey he's been on and the troubles he's had um and a lot of that bleeds into the music not a lot of it like everything bleeds into the music mm-hmm. which is what i look for for music i love a sense of urgency i love a story to tell i love a passion that goes into it it's not just hey let's the, let's write this kind of song because we want to sound like this. behind something yeah 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 not this is the sound of the times so let let's me capitalize it. on it yep. and write a catchy commercial right yeah yeah Yep. But I think you even said to me in, in a text that you this sounds like a song that had yeah. it been released. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. If earlier. it was late 90s, early 2000s, and if this were to get some radio play, mm-hmm. I feel like this is a hit song. Yeah. And, and by today's standards, it may end up being a hit song yeah. for you know a band of this capacity. It's not necessarily mainstream, but also not there's not really a true underground anymore, in my mm-hmm. opinion. It's, right. Everything's attainable everything can be heard and yeah it's not just route radio play anymore um so i do think this song is going to do well i do think it's going to have some detractors from their core like keith's core fans may not Mm -hmm. uh, embrace it as much initially and even my initial reaction wasn't as good as my my second watch i enjoyed it more the second time than i did the first but um yeah i tip my cap to him keith big fan if you're ever out there you're watching this reaction Mm -hmm. we would love to interview you it would be a dream of mine and I know you're getting into him much more in the last few mm-hmm. years, but definitely, man, that what an honor that would be to be able to talk to him about his writing and you Just know everything that goes into journey. His, the journey he's been mm-hmm. on. Yeah, and he he talks about it openly in other podcasts, and uh, it'd be great, it'd be a great experience to mm-hmm. get that from him. Is he is he your Beatles? He is. He's by far my favorite lyricist, and vocalist, and performer in a band. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a couple other guys that are up close, but. He is, it's just, it's just different. There's something different about what he puts into it. There's a different vocal style, different ranges. I've talked about, you know, his his, his cadence, you know, mm-hmm. is, and often in his faster paced songs, it's just, it's just like I've never heard anybody do it quite like he does it. Mm. Yeah, so for me, he's, yeah, top notch. Yeah, yep. I enjoyed it. I'm sure I'll listen to it 20 more times yeah, in the coming really, days and weeks. You're really digging it. I yeah. like that. It'd be interesting. At the end of the year, when we do our Spotify yeah. wrapped, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Many Eyes or Every Time I Die is on our list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it'll be on mine. Yeah. But that's true. I'm, I'm sure Many Eyes will be on yours. I'll be curious if, if you get more into the Every Time I Die stuff. But mm-hmm. that's that, that'll take work because there's a lot of albums and the sound changes quite a bit over the years. But it's always freaking boss. Mm-hmm. Ugh, so good. Yep. No, I like this. It's probably third on my list in terms of musically of the three releases, but okay. I think, you know, lyrically this, it's it's right up there. So far, number one. Yeah. Just barely above Revelation mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, yeah. So far. That's interesting. That's funny how and music different for everybody. People take different things makes, from everything. Makes me a lot more curious for what's next. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. all three have been different. They have. Yeah, so you... you, you think you're going to get a pretty diverse album um that's going to be fascinating yeah. to see yeah it's like oh you think you think we're a metal band you think we're right. we're you know just going to scream nope here have this yeah it's yeah cool. i like that i think it's good to show that diversity and also writing what you want to write like mm-hmm. 
that's the one knock I have on a lot of bands. Like, and it's tough because you fall in love with these bands that you hear for so long, especially if you were on board with them from the earliest of their days. Then you you start to love that sound so much that when they deviate from it, a lot of times people get annoyed and they stop mm-hmm. stop listening or stop following that band. But like, man, you, like you have to progress. I would think I don't write music, but I would think as as my listening has changed, so would your writing, right? Like you're not mm-hmm. just gonna who wants to write the same yeah. shit for 25 years? Of course. Like you got to expand and and get into different areas of mm-hmm. the writing process and and sonically just everything can't constantly be the same shit over and over again you you have to grow and i think he's at a point in his life where he's grown so much in his personal life that i think it's now bleeding into his music even more so than it ever has before and you're seeing that yeah yeah cool very cool all right that's our reaction to many eyes future proof if you have recommendations put them in the comments let us know what you think of the episode let us know what you think of many eyes yeah yep i'd love to hear it yep as always thank you deuces peace